Welcome to the new and improved Frost Mage. Uh, yeah, this guy's here because I don't do my Scar campaign, but anyway, we're going to be covering pretty much everything you need to know uh, for Frost Mage, and you should be able to skip to the sections you want to watch on the timeline below. Have fun and enjoy. I wanted to go over a little bit more of the basics with all the changes coming to 10.1.5. I'm sure there will be some people who are, you know, kind of unfamiliar with them. Uh, watching the video. So the most important thing to know about Frost is Shatter. And Shatter multiplies the crit strike chance of your spells against frozen targets by 1.5 and adds an additional 50% crit chance. So what this means is, uh, I have a notepad, <laughs> is if you have 33.34% crit and you multiply that by 1.5, you get 50% crit. And then if you add 50% to that, you have 100% crit. So if you had 33.34% crit, you would have a 100% crit rate against frozen targets. All right. Now, this is referred to as the crit soft cap for Frost. This is not a goal that we hit with our gearing. We do not aim to hit this amount. So if you get to 100% crit, you know, the less valuable crit is, right? It still can be worth it, but that's just based on your own sims uh, for your character. And yeah, good. But for when a target is frozen, there's a few different ways that that will happen. The first one's going to be Fingers of Frost. Uh, it's up here. And this is just the procs on the left and right of your character, and it only works with Ice Lance. Importantly, this causes you know your next Ice Lance deal damage to uh, all targets as if it was frozen. So Ice Lance actually you know, splits into two right, with Splitting Ice. So it will crit on both the first and second target, or treat them as frozen, uh, which for Ice Lance means, in addition to the crit increase, it will also deal three times damage. That's good to know. Then there's Winter's Chill. Um, this is applied by Flurry. See, it has like three different projectiles that sends out. This causes all spells to treat the target as if they were frozen. Um, I actually get kind of unlucky there. Normally my shifting power mostly crits, but you know, that's okay. Anyway. Any mage spell when it hits a Winter's Chill target um, will get the benefit of Frozen. So Comet Storm, Arcane Explosion, Ice Nova, Shifting Power, whatever. If it hits a Winter's Chill target, then it gets the benefit. Right? Um, and AoE spells like Comet Storm and Frozen Orb and Blizzard and Arcane Explosion and Shifting Power, all those benefit from the Winter's Chill Frozen effect, but they don't consume it, which is why you'll see us do a pretty common combo is Frostbolt Flurry, Comet Storm, and then you do two Ice Lances because the Winter's Chill didn't get used up by the Comet Storm, but still benefited from it. Anyway, we're going to have ourselves, just to let you know. Kind of Cold also can apply Winter's Chill. Um, if you have the talent Coldest Snap and you hit three targets, it'll apply at the moment one stack, but that's a bug. That's okay. Anyway, aside from Winter's Chill, um, you have roots. These are only usable against targets that are not CC immune. So, you know, if I walked up and dragon's breath this guy, he would get CC and I can freeze him too because of it. You can see he has like the little freeze effect. Freeze him again, frost nova. Um, I put the minimum duration for all the roots here. So, you know, ice nova, freeze, and frost nova, all the minimum duration of one second. And then uh, the root from kind of cold, which is from freezing cold, and the root from frostbite's only 0.5 seconds as a minimum. These will mainly be used in AoE in Mythic Plus, because that's where you're going to find targets that can actually be frozen. Um, because in Raid, you know, targets can't be frozen. There's a certain like level requirement for them. They can't be, they have to be less than your level plus 3, and most bosses are like level 73, so that doesn't work for them. Um, but this does mean that our rotation will be different if we're hitting CC immune targets or not. But yeah. Recap, you know, this is just how you could calculate shatter if you really wanted to. You don't need to do this just for conceptually understanding it. This is why crit diminishes in value pretty heavily after 33.34%, um, which isn't to say that we don't want more after it. it kind of depends, you know, sim. Um, but yeah. 
Now we have kind of the bread and butter of the spec, which is the flurry combo. I think this is important, but for people who haven't played Frost before and people who are looking to see how our abilities are going to fit into our rotation in 10.1.5, of course, I'm going to have a priority list and example gameplay for you later. But I think that conceptually, this is a really good exercise to consider. One of the things you need to know is uh, flurry is actually three projectiles. You can kind of see it anytime you shoot it. And because of how that works, we actually get a winner's chill uh, before your flurry, if you precast something, if I cast Frostbolt and then I uh, queue a flurry, what this is going to do is have the flurry hit before my Frostbolt or one of the flurries, and then my flurry will shatter because of this. So that's why there's a whale chill right there. This is only possible with cast spells, which is why in the before section we only have two spells, whereas in the after section we have a lot more. Um, so if you're familiar with Frost, then right now, or 10.1, and in the past, this has been our flurry combo, right? You just frostbolt flurry, ice lance, ice lance. Um, and if you're familiar with Sepulcher, we put, you know, Comet Storm right here. It'll be frostbolt flurry, Comet Storm, ice lance, ice lance. That is uh, exactly how we're going to use Comet Storm again. So with Comet Storm, it's not complicated at all for single target. You press it right after you press flurry. That's it. Only time. Only time you'll ever press it. So now, you know, if we're looking at what the um, flurry combo would look like, it would every 30 seconds be Frostbolt, Flurry, Comet Storm, Ice Lance, Ice Lance. Um, and now we have Ray Frost as well. This only goes on the second, so the last stack of Winter's Chill. So if you were to use it every minute, it would be like a Frostbolt, Flurry, Ice Lance, Ray Frost. Okay. And so these two abilities are only ever used in the places I just showed you. Ray Frost is only ever on the second wear chill. Comet Storm is only ever after Flurry. That hopefully removes uh, some of what you thought was going to be additional rotational complexity. Because, you know, it's not complexity. You just, you know, after you Frostbolt Flurry or while you're Frostbolt Flurrying, you just check to see if you have Comet Storm, then you press it. Um, and, or you, during it, you check to see if you're Ray Frost, then you press it on the second one, right? Now... Where you're going to find your rotational complexity of this patch is going to come from Glacial Spike. As you can see, Glacial Spike is in the before section and it's in the after section. That's because it can go on any of these winter chill boxes. Um, you can either precast it and then cast Flurry, or you can cast it after Flurry on either of those spots. And this is just going to be based around when you get five icicles. Um, no matter when it is, you just want to use it into Winter's Chill. So, for instance, uh, the most complicated Winter's Chill combo you could have is something like this, right? Where you Glacial Spike, Flurry, Comet Storm, Ice Lance, Ray Frost. Um, this would only ever happen every minute because Ray Frost has a minute long cooldown. Um, doing something like a Frost Bolt into Flurry into a Comet Storm into a glacial spike, into an ice lance. This is a little bit more common because Comet Storm has a 30 second cooldown. Um, but again, right, the main thing you have to look out for here is just your glacial spike because we already know where Comet Storm's going and it's always going to go right after Flurry. So, yeah, hopefully this helped you know, demystify the Flurry combo for you and understand a bit better, you know, where we're putting things. Um, I guess I can say why really quick, you know, Glacial Spike just wants to shatter, so you want to put it anywhere. Um, but for Comet Storm, you want it right after Flurry, because you need time for all the Comets to hit while Winter's Chill is still active. It doesn't consume them, and now I just Ray Frost. And so if you were to put it uh, between these two, and then you immediately Ice Lanced, uh, what would happen would be your Winter's Chill would just, you know, fall off before all your Comets hit. So that's why we put it um, right there. And for Ray of Frost, uh, we want to put it on the second stack because it generates two fingers of frost. So if we put it on the first stack, we're just guaranteeing we're proc munching more. So that's why you put it on the second stack. And since I mentioned that the main reason you want Comet Storm after Flurry is because you want to give it time for all the comets to hit, you can delay it a little bit depending on your cooldowns. This isn't necessary at all. It's also not in the Sims uh, if you were to sim, but Let's say your Comet Storm doesn't actually come up until after you've already consumed one of the Winter's Chill, right? You already Ice Lanced here. Well, if your next GCD is Ray or Glacial Spike, 
that's going to give enough time for all your comets to land before you consume the winter's chill, so you can use it there too. But again, um, that's not necessary, and it's also probably not going to happen to you very often. So, yeah. Let's talk about the general tree talents. The only ones that are completely set in stone, like hard recommend you take, um, are the throughput ones. So, counter's flow, overwhelming energy, shifting power, stat nodes, and temporal warp. Aside from that, you can kind of pick whatever. Um, from a utility standpoint, you know, highly recommend Alter Time, Master Time, Ice Block, um, Winter's Protection. But if we just talk about the capstone level, since this is the part that was most impacted, you're generally going to be build like this, uh, where you get you know, all your utility and a lot of defensiveness from Mass Barrier and Ice Cold. Ice Cold's a better defensive than Ice Block, so you'll be going it most times unless you need to remove a debuff. And it does benefit from all the same talents Ice Block benefits from. So its cooldowns reduced by 60 seconds here. And you heal for 80% of your max HP if you take this over 6 seconds. You're probably going to take this. This isn't a guide for your general tree yet. Um, and then the only other thing of importance to note, aside from uh, Shimmer versus Ice Flows, you're probably playing Ice Flows a bit more. Most of the time as Frost because we have a lot of casts that are long, like Glacial Spike, right? Frost. Um, I'm pretty sure in Mythic Plus you can very easily get away with playing Shimmer, though, because you don't have very Frost anymore. Uh, the other important thing to mention is Freezing Cold. With how Kona Cold is currently used in your AoE rotation, um, if you're playing Sub-Zero, you want to take this. If you're not playing Sub-Zero, I would take Ice Horde. But yeah, that's the main things to mention here. Um, time manipulation does reduce the cooldown of your freezes by two seconds per hit. Freeze, by the way, is not reduced by time manipulation. Just uh, Ice Nova and Frost Nova, which is quite good still. All right, this is what your single target talents are going to look like next patch. So first off, let's talk about the general tree. This is just what I would envision a raid general tree is going to look like. Uh, it has all the defensive ones that you need, and you don't need CC in the raid, so you can't take you know, random stuff or more defensive value. So yeah, nothing much to say over here, except you got healing. Uh, reduce CDR for your ice cold. You got to burn energy, which is pretty strong now. You have mass barrier, greater invis. You know, you got all the juicy stuff. Uh, so your general tree looking very solid this way. We don't really care about incantation of swiftness, both because you know we just don't have uh, actual invis anymore, so it's just a lot less useful in raid. And also because since it is tied to greater invis now, you're never going to use this for its um, movement speed. Looking over here at the single target tree, the crazy thing is just the fact that you're taking Glacial Spike, Ray Frost, and Comet Storm at the same time. But yeah, you know, and uh, I'll describe how to use those more in depth now. Um, but aside from that, you have a pretty standard single target build. Uh, it's just kind of an accessory to what our single target rotation already was, except of course we're now taking freezing winds in single target, which we actually haven't been uh, for all of Dragonflight, so. But nothing crazy, really. You do want to take Glacial Salt just because this has a really high debuff uptime, uh, like 40% 40, 40 or so, so it's quite good. Uh, our talents are pretty set for single target, to be honest. For our single target priority list, as I already mentioned, you're going to Comet Storm your last GC was Flurry. Um, and then you have the same Flurry conditional as before where you want to do it if the target doesn't already have Moir's Chill. And either you're going to queue it after Frostbolt and Glacial Spike, or you have four Icicles. And no Finish Frost. For Ray of Frost, you just want to use it on the second Moir's Chill stack. And you want to make sure Freezing Winds isn't up so you're not just overcapping a bunch of Finish Frost. For Glacial Spike, uh, you're just going to use it either to precast into Flurry, which is the same as this condition right here, or if Winter's Chill is on the target to replace Ice Lance. For Frozen Warp, you basically just don't want to use it uh, when you could be Ray Frosting. That's essentially what this line wants you to do. For Shifting Power, you are going to just press down CD at a determined time after your first orb ends, essentially. And then right after that, it'll, you just literally just press on CD, uh, and it will be pressed during Icy Veins. So. For Ice Lance, you're either going to press if you have Fingers Frost or if the target has Winter's Chill, 
you prefer to press glacial spike, you can, of course, so that takes precedence because it's higher on the priority list. This and the last GC was not glacial spike, mainly has to deal with when you have fingers of frost and you're ending a flurry combo. So for instance, if you flurry by frostbolt, flurry, ice lance, glacial spike, if you had fingers of frost and you wanted to follow this with an ice lance, uh, the ice lance would travel faster than the glacial spike and actually consume your winner's chill and make your glacial spike not cheddar. So when you're glacial spiking on the second winner's chill stack, uh, ice lance is banned. I mean, you would just cast like frostbolt or shifting power instead. Then um, you'll just glacial spike if icy paint is up. You know, if you don't have flurry for thermal void extension and gain value of your frigid winds damage buff, this is actually damage neutral conditions so you could remove it if you want especially because um, when we're outside of icy veins we don't we just hold glacial spike for flurry so this is a bit of a different play style when you're in icy veins versus when you're out of it uh, i just think that in general it results in better gameplay rg and stuff so and then you have frostbolt at the bottom with temporal warp we're still playing it um, ideally you want to use it with your second icy veins instead of after 40 seconds like we were in the past. But if you end up losing like an overall use in a fight encounter, you'll end up um, just using it after 40 seconds instead, if that makes sense. So your two options are either use at zero seconds and then use at 40 seconds, or use at zero seconds and use it like one minute, 40 seconds when you use your second ice fans. Right. For most of the raid fights, if you're on farm, you're going to be doing this. Uh, and I imagine with the plus is probably uh, also end up being you hold it for the your next ice mates as well. All right, so I lost it, so this is going to go <laughs> very fast. So let's review for a second before I play the video, because I can't slow it down. Um, our opener is a Frostbolt Flurry and Icy Veins. This is exactly the same as it was last patch. Um, and then because Comet Storm is our top priority, we're going to Comet Storm. We're then going to Ice Lance, uh, and then Ray of Frost. And then after this Ray of Frost, you'll be building to a glacial spike using your two fingers of frost that you just casted. Um, well, actually, you flurry at four ice cubes, but yeah. And then you'll glacial spike, and then you'll frozen orb, and then after your frozen orb, ideally, or during, but after is a little bit better, you'll shifting power. So let's let's give that a watch. So Frostbolt, Flurry, Icy Veins, Comet Storm, Lance, Ray. Now, I, I Ice Lance, Glacial Spike, Flurry. Um, so the important thing to note right here, you see I'm at five Icicles. And where normally I would have needed another spell, uh, in this case it would have been Flurry before I Glacial Spiked, here Splintering Cold proc at some point, um, because this is only two Icicles, and then this is the third Icicle. So when I Ice Lance after my Ray Frost, I would technically only have four Icicles. But on either Flurry or Frostbolt, my Splintering Cold proct, which is good because it means I can precast my Glacial Spike into Flurry instead of Glacial or Flurry and then Glacial Spike, which just means you get an extra Ice Lance. So that's RNG for you. But yeah, so right after I Glacial Spike there, I use my Frozen Orb. And I get rid of these Winter's Chill. I Flurried there because I was at four Icicles. And now I'm going to Glacial Spike. And I Ice Lance to get rid of the other Winter's Chill. We're going to Frostbolt into Flurry after the Shifting Power, because I wanted to get Shifting Power on cooldown. Frostbolt Flurry. Here, I Comet Storm, Glacial Spike. There, you can see I actually cast a Frostbolt right after that Glacial Spike. That's because we're in this situation where I'm Glacial Spiking on the second Winter's Chill stack, and I have Fingers of Frost. So I want to avoid using these Fingers of Frost, because otherwise it will make my Glacial Spike not shatter. So we Frostbolt, and then we Flurry, because we just Frostbolted. Uh, and then we use our two ice lances, and then we flurry again because I was at four icicles. Oops. Um, and then I glacial spike ice lance. And we frostbolt. And here I'm glacial spike, even though I don't have flurry because icy veins is up. And I keep fishing for some procs. Glacial spike because I have five icicles, and you know that's just how you play. And you glacial spike again. Then yeah, now we're outside of icy veins, so we're only using glacial spike with um, wish chill. So here's the, kind of the dreaded combo of the comet storm glacial spike ray frost. 
your winter's chill does fall off uh, outside of icy veins in that scenario, but it doesn't matter. So I have five icicles, but I'm going to ignore Glacial Spike because I didn't have Flurry yet. However, after my Ice Lance, I react to the fact that I got a Brain Freeze proc. And so now, since Glacial Spike is higher priority than Ice Lance, I'm going to start casting Glacial Spike into a Flurry. Then we Ice Lance. Um, now I Shifting Power's up, so I just cast Shifting Power. This was a little bit late, because you can see I started casting it. Um, basically when my Comet Storm was at 9 seconds. Technically, you know, if you read this, I'm only supposed to cast it when it has more than 10 seconds on CD. But it's fine. And then here was uh, the, the one, like, mistake I made during this, and that was that I casted Glacial Spike before my Comet Storm here, so you would have wanted to cast Comet Storm first. But yeah, and that's really it. I'm about to enter my second Icy Veins and repeat it all over again, so hopefully that helped. Um, sorry that, you know, I paused this if you wanted to watch a fluid version. I guess I'll just let this play now without really pausing it or talking over it. Um, if you want to watch a more fluid version of it. I didn't like add this in post production either. I'm just sitting here watching it with you. <laughs> I don't know. It's good to reflect sometimes. Also, I didn't fix my freezing or uh, freezing winds aura. Sorry if that's bothering anyone. I'll fix it uh, before it goes live. It's got some outdated information. But yeah, again, you know, that Comet Storm was a mistake, should have been, actually the Glacial Spike was a mistake. The Glacial Spike should have been after the Comet Storm, so. But, you know, it takes practice, so. Our two target talents and gameplay are the same as our single target talents and gameplay, so. That's easy. Now, for AoE talents, this is where things get a little bit more murky. Um, I am not fully confident that this is what the meta will be for our spec tree. But I'm going to talk you through what the possibilities are. Uh, and none of them change the way you play, really. So, aside from your base AoE, um, so you should be fine no matter what. On our class tree side, I went ahead and kind of took a lot more utility that's useful for Mythic Plus. I don't have Roof Curse because it's not as useful all the time. And I wanted to take other talents, but you would take it in a Nelthoris um, and probably Ultiman as well. So you have everything you want. You have your more utility with Dragon's Breath, Blast Wave. You have time manipulation, which is really good for AoE. Um, and then Cryo Fees, I think you actually will end up putting in Divert Energy instead. If you're not Frost, you don't really need Cryo Freeze, right? You're only using Ice Cold once every three minutes, if that. And so Divert Energy is going to be a lot stronger in the midst of that period. Um, and if you have a 70% DR, you don't really need a heal. Your healer can heal you. But we'll see. You know, it's kind of personal preference, too. It doesn't matter whichever one you take, because uh, they're just defensive options. So whichever one you like more. Anyway, let's talk about the spec tree. Uh, we drop Ray Frost and Cryopathy for Ice Collar and Freezing Rain. Um, and then we drop Slick Ice for Cold Snap, and we drop Frozen Touch for Chain Reaction. So there's a few different talents that you can take here. Uh, I think that as a general build, this is probably the best one to kind of slot in to use. However, you can get a lot more AoE damage if you move Splintering Cold to Sub-Zero and Chain Reaction to Frostbite. This requires you to... It's only a lot more AoE damage, I should say, against freezable enemies. Uh, and it is a significant, 
amount less single target, you'll lose like 5% single target if you do that, uh, but you'll gain like 10% AOE. But you can do middle grounds of that, right? So you don't need Frostbite, you can just drop Splintering Cold and take Sub-Zero, um, or you can drop Chain Reaction take Frostbite. But again, this is general build I recommend. To give you an idea of where Chain Reaction can go, because right now, right, if I take it out, it can go in Ray Frost, it can go in Slick Ice, it can go in Frozen Touch, and it can go in Frostbite. Um, here's the value kind of this. So this is a one target sim with, you know, where that point can go. Frostbite is, you know, 2% worse. Frozen Touch, basically the same as Chain Reaction. Slick Ice is a little bit better. Ray Frost is a lot better. However, you add two targets, right? You just get to two target. Ray Frost is in the gutter. Frostbite's still bad because these are unfreezable mobs. Frozen Touch got worse. Slick Ice is about even with Chain Reaction. Now you go to five uh, target with freezable mobs, and you'll see that chain reaction is just winning out of all of these. Um, of course, this would continue kind of between two and above five targets. Frostbite's only minorly winning. This is because I don't actually have Sub Zero talented when I'm doing this. If I had Sub Zero talented, it would be a lot higher. Um, so Frostbite plus Sub Zero is kind of a bit of a pad talent thing. Hopefully, this gives you an idea of you know why I chose chain reaction over Frozen Touch, like Ice or Ray Frost. Um, you know, there might certainly be times where you might want to choose Ray Frost, especially on like Tyrannical, because it is such a massive gain single target. But you just gotta understand that it's kind of trash above that, uh, because you can't afford to take any of the other talents with it. Otherwise, it'd be good. Snowstorm at the moment, I don't think is worth considering. For instance, in a Brackenhide, this would be quite common that you would do a build like this. In, in like a Fort Brackenhide, I would almost certainly run this. Um, because there's so many targets, and this does a lot, lot of high target count AoE damage. Let's talk about the AoE rotation then. Here's our AoE rotation. Um, it just has a bunch of free stuff added to it, but otherwise, you know, it's not that bad. So number one is just gonna be Kona Colding. Uh, you want to Kona Cold, if you have Cold Snap, it's pretty high priority. And your last GC was Comet Storm. And Comet Storm, you know, or and um, Frozen Orb basically isn't ready to be pressed. And you want to press Frozen Orb before you use this, essentially. It's fine. Uh, then your second one is going to be Frozen Orb. If, you know, your last GC wasn't Glacial Spike. And then the third one's going to be Blizzard. Again, if your last GC wasn't Glacial Spike, because you want to be able to shatter your Glacial Spike in AoE. Um, the caveat to these is if the target isn't freezable, then you just use them and you kind of ignore shattering glacial spike. Okay. Then you're going to Comet Storm if either Kona kind of Cold's ready. So you can, uh, if you do a Comet Storm into Kona kind of Cold, because Kona kind of Cold puts Winter's Chill on the targets, you're going to shatter it all in AoE, which is quite strong. Or if, you know, Kona kind of Cold has more than 20 seconds on CD so that you uh, cannot lose any uses of Comet Storm. Now for these three, this is just a ranked order of how you freeze Glacial Spike. We don't actually shatter Comet Storm right now. Comet Storm shattering is kind of all handled by Kona kind of Cold and incidentally a little bit by um, you shattering Glacial Spike. But yeah, your priority of freezes is if you're casting Glacial Spike and freezes up from your water elemental, you use that at the end of the cast. If you're casting Glacial Spike and freeze isn't up, but Ice Nova is, they use that at the end of the cast. And if both those are down, you use Frost Nova. Again, this is only if a target can be frozen. Otherwise, you can just completely ignore this. Now, uh, this eighth thing is just going to be a, you know, kind of cold. If you have Snowstorm stacks, which we're not going to play Snowstorm. So you can kind of delete that. Um, also, since kind of cold already has its cooldown with Cold Snap and everything, you're just going to be using it for this. Even if you have Snowstorm, you just use it for Cold Snap. So then you have Shifting Power. No conditionals. Uh, then you have Glacial Spike. Then you have Flurry if there's no Winter's Chill on the target. Um, and then you have Ice Lance when you either have Fingers Frost or Winter's Chill. This is actually and you have Brain Freeze. Um, and then you would put Flurry under here. Flurry with no Brain Freeze. Because basically, uh, if you have Brain Freeze, you don't want to overcap it. So you want to use that before you Ice Lance. If you don't have Brain Freeze, then Ice Lance is just way better to press an AoE, so, yep. Great, now let's get into an AoE example. All right, so <laughs> I think people will find this part the most egregious about New Frost, but 
let's talk about the AOE rotation. So quick refresher, uh, this is our AOE priority list, right? We have an opener with a precast blizzard into icy veins and frozen orb. This is exactly what we do right now. But then we comet storm, counter cold, frozen orb, comet storm, blizzard, shifting power. Which is kind of a lot. But now that I just told you what it is, hopefully you can follow along a little bit better because I am going to lust this um, just so I can do damage, you know? So it'll be kind of fast. So precast blizzard, orb, icy veins, lust, comet storm. We just kind of cold it here. You can see it's going to shatter my comet storm and my frozen orb. Now I want to re frozen orb and then comet storm. And the reason you want to re frozen orb is because you have your blizzard ticking on these targets. So you, you know, don't want to waste CDR on it. So, you know, orb, comet storm, uh, re blizzard, shifting power. And then after this ends, I re blizzard again. Um, I think I actually flurried there, but yeah, you would have re blizzard. It's fine. It's just a GCD into my orb, it's up, and now I start using my fillers with like ice lance and things. My blizzard's coming back off cooldown, so I use blizzard here. Ice lance, now I'm at five icicle stacks. Um, you can see that basically all my abilities are down, except for procs, uh, which means I wanna use glacial spike. So I'm at glacial spike. I have freeze, ice nub, and frost nub up, but since I have freeze and that's the best one, I wanna use freeze. So we're gonna keep going. I freeze at the end of the cast, re-blizzard, um, just use some of my procs. I don't have a good freezing winds tracker, so now I'm gonna start frostbolt because I have no procs here. Uh, and then I orb, blizzard, ice lance. This is a lineup right here that you only get in lust. Um, you can see that for my second glacial spike, I'm glacial spiking. My comet storm is actually about to come off cooldown. So I'm gonna glacial spike into ice nova here, into comet storm. And so even though I'm kind of indirectly shattering this comet storm because I just shattered my glacial spike with Ice Nova, which is nice. Um, but you will miss this if you're not in Lust, which is fine. It's just kind of an indirect thing that happens. Then here, I'm going to shatter with Frost Nova, right? Because I already shattered with Freeze, so it's on CD, and I already shattered with Ice Nova, so that's on CD. So now I'm going to use my Frost Nova. And here, you know, I refreeze because it just came off cooldown. Glacial spike into Ice Nova because that's all that's available now. Now freeze is gone. Here, my uh, even though my comet storm's up, my frozen orb was almost up, so I wanted to frozen orb, then comet, then kind of hold. Um, basically, I wanted to hold my comet storm into my Kona Cold combo until my Frozen Orb had a certain amount of CD left. Um, it doesn't really matter how much, it's just if it's really close to being used, you want to use it before you do your Count Storm into Kona Cold. Um, the EPL, for instance, just has it at, I think, greater than 20 seconds, but if you just shift that to 5 seconds, it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, uh, just, just use it. Use your orb first if it's close. Here I'm gonna just not shatter my Comet Storm at all, just let it rain down. Um, and I'm gonna shatter this Glacial Spike. Yeah. yeah. And here I untarget the mobs, <laughs> which is kinda of awkward, but hopefully that gives you a good idea of what our AOE rotation is going to look like practically. Um, and I guess I'll also let it replay without interruptions on my part, so you can just see what happened. Because I think that might be helpful. That initial thing where I used Flurry over um, Blizzard right out of Shifting Power was, you know, a mistake. Should have been Blizzard. That's okay. Doesn't matter too much.
you'd see that kind of happening throughout my rotation too. So something I will work on. It's a bit more punishing for you to, you know, do other GCDs because you have less haste now, which is kind of annoying. So I really wish Blizzard wasn't really functioning as it does, uh, to be honest, because you just have to press it so often, which is a bit annoying. But yeah, I'm an entire thing, so good example. Alright, so this is going to be against, or how you would play against unfreezable mobs. I'm hitting freezable mobs, but I'm not going to freeze them. And I'm just going to play how you normally would, which means you're using Flurry a bit more, you know, smarter, I guess, a bit smarter, um, to try and work with GS. You won't shatter it if at the end of the cast, uh, Kona Cold or Orb or Blizzard are up. Um, so something that's good that you can do is pre-flurry and then Glacial Spike, if you know that's going to happen to you. And that'll be something that you'll have to get used to. I mean, I'm messing it up right now. So. And here, um, I should blizzard it before I comet stormed, but that's okay. So here, I'm going to blizzard after my glacial spike, which is why it's good that I pre-flurried because I want to be able to shatter it. You don't really care about. Um, not ice dancing after glacial spike, even on the second stack of Mars chill, at least from what I've looked at so far. Hopefully that doesn't change and make this video outdated, because you can see I just did it there. The reality is it would force us to cast like Frostbolt or maybe Arcane Explosion, which would be worse. So here I probably should have held that for my first round cooldown. Uh, but it's alright. Normally you want to wait until your first ARP has like greater than 20 seconds left or something uh, before you do the kind of cold. Here I'm holding my shifting power till after I use Blizzard. And I come and start out of it immediately so that I don't miss a use between my kind of colds. But yeah, hopefully that was a good example against unfreezable enemies for you. So the stat consumable conversation, uh, we still run Corrupting Rage and the value of crit tanked a little bit because of us losing Ice Repulsion. Um, and Haste doesn't have as much value as might expect because we're in Lust and Icy Veins for such a high period of time. So we still want to go really heavy into Mastery and then kind of like medium into crit and Haste and then like less than medium into Versatility. Um, I'm not saying that as like an actual stat priority because I want you to sim your gear because you should. Uh, and if anyone told you just to straight stat priority, it's not going to be accurate. You should just sim your gear. But in general, heavy mastery, medium crit haste, and then um, slightly less than medium versatility, <laughs> if that makes sense. For your trinkets, uh, spoils and ominous chromatic essence are our best trinkets next patch. It's fine to use a lot of the other trinkets we're using before 10.5, so Vessel of Searing Shadow is fine, uh, the Call to Chaos class trinket's pretty good in AoE, though I wouldn't necessarily use it in every Mythic Plus dungeon. It's really good in Brackenhide, because three out of four of the bosses are AoE bosses, though. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, none, of the other, <laughs> none of the other trinkets really deserve a special mention. For spoils, by the way, in single target, we aim for using it. Um, to get mastery, or if lust isn't up, we try and get we can get haste as well, or we can get versatility. Um, and in AOE, you just want to go for versatility, really. And that's it. So you completely ignore crit in all conditions, basically. Uh, but that's how you use it. It's kind of annoying, 
I would recommend getting a tracker for it just so you can tell what it is, you know, before you press the button. Um, Because, again, you only want to activate it in the circumstances I just told you about. So, yeah. But it'll be fine to run double passive trinkets as well if you want to do that. Um, But your burst will certainly suffer. So, 